Hello, my darlings. So good to see you again. My name is Silhouette. Welcome back to my little book nook. I have yet another story for you tonight. One from our little grim tales once again. This one looked like a short little story. And I would love to read it for you. This one is called The Seven Ravens. There was once a man who had seven sons, and still he had no daughter, however much he wished for one. It's a lot of boys, dude. At length, his wife again gave him hope of a child, and when it came into the world, it was a girl. The joy was great, but the child was sickly and small, and had to be privately baptized on account of its weak... What? Oh, okay. I have to remember, this is a time of God. Let's try this again. The father sent one of the boys in haste to the spring to fetch water for the baptism, and the other six went with him because they just do that. Boys just go to wells together. And as each of them wanted to be first to fill it, the jug fell into the well. There they stood and did not know what to do, and none of them dared go home. As they still did not return, the father grew impatient and said, they have certainly forgotten it for some game, the wicked boys. He became afraid that the girl would die without being baptized. And in his anger cried, I wish the boys were all turned into raven. Hardly was the word spoken before he heard a whirring of wings over his head in the air and looked up and saw seven coal black ravens flying away. <laughs> this is so stupid! The parents could not recall the curse, and however sad they were at the loss of their seven sons, they still, to some extent, comforted themselves with their dear little daughter, who soon grew strong and every day became more beautiful. Oh! For a long time, she did not know that she had had brothers. <laughs> For her parents were careful to not mention them before her. But one day she accidentally heard some people saying of herself that the girl was certainly beautiful, but in reality, she was to blame for the misfortune which had befallen her seven brothers. I'm pretending that it's in public. They just kind of <laughs> birds in public. Then she was much troubled and went to her father and mother and asked if it was true that she had had brothers and what had become of them. The parents now dared keep the secret no longer, but said that what had befallen her brothers was the will of heaven and that her birth was not to blame. But the maiden took it to heart daily and thought she must save her brothers. She had no rest or peace until she set out secretly and went forth into the wide world to find her brothers and set them free let it cost what it might. She took nothing with her but a little ring, belonging to her parents as a keepsake, a loaf of bread against hunger, and a little pitcher of water against thirst, and a little chair as a provision against weariness. Okay. And now she went continually onwards, far, far to the very end of the world. Then she came to the sun, but it was too hot and terrible and devoured little children. Okay. Hastily she ran away and ran to the moon, but it was far too cold and awful and malicious. And when it saw the child, it said, I smell, I smell the flesh of... <laughs> what? At this she ran swiftly away and came to the stars which were kind and good to her, and each of them sat on its own particular little chair. It's serious. And each of them sat on its own particular little chair. But the morning star arose and gave her the drumstick of a chicken. And gave her the drumstick of a chicken and said that if you have not that drumstick, you cannot open the glass mountain and in the glass mountain are your br Brothers. B 
bro. What kind of storybook acid trip am I on right now? The maiden took the drumstick, wrapped it carefully in cloth, and went onward again until she came to the glass mountain. The door was shut, and she thought she would take out the drumstick. But when she undid the cloth, it was empty, and she had lost the good star's present. What was she to do now? She wished to rescue her brothers and had no key to the glass mountain. The good sister took out a knife. When did she have a knife? And cut off one of her little fingers? Put it in the door? And succeeded in opening it? When she had gone inside, a little dwarf came to meet her. Knock on the freaking door next time! Who said, my child, what are you looking for? I am looking for my brothers, the seven ravens, she replied. The dwarf said, the Lord ravens are not at home, but if you will wait here until they have come, step in. Thereupon the little dwarf carried the raven's dinner in on seven little plates, and in seven little glasses, the little sister ate a morsel from each plate. <laughs> what a fierce. And from each little glass she took a sip, but in the last little glass she dropped the ring which she had brought away with her. I thought she cut off her finger, Jesus. Suddenly she heard a whirring of wings and rushing through the air, and then the little dwarf said, Now the Lord Ravens are flying home. Then they came and wanted to eat and drink and look for their little plates and glasses. Then said one after the other, Who has eaten something from my plate? Who? has drunken something out of my little glass. It was a human mouth. How the f could you know? And when the seventh came to the bottom of the glass, the ring rolled against his mouth. Then he looked at it and saw it was a ring belonging to his father and mother and said, God grant that our sister may be here and then we shall be free. When the maiden who was standing behind the door watching heard that wish, she came forth, and at this all the ravens were restored to their human form again, and they embraced and kissed each other and went joyfully home. Okay. Let's have a little talk, kids. If life were that easy... Life ain't that easy, kids. First of all, what was the point of the drumstick? You could have made that literally any item in the book. Second of all, the mountain was made of glass. Wouldn't they have seen her through the door? Third, why was she hiding? What was the point of that? I mean, sure, there might be feral ravens after all this time, but apparently they somehow got themselves a, a glass bachelor pad with a dwarf manservant, and she talked to the stars. Well, that concludes story time this time, kids. If you liked what you watched, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll be sure to read yet another story from this asinine book of beloved memories. I swear, I literally don't remember that story. Thank you so much for joining me in my little book nook. Until we meet again.